When we think of travel on large jets, we normally think of the large Boeing and Airbus jets that dominate the skies today. We never really hear about any large aircraft serving commercial passengers from the country of Russia. This brings up the topic of today's video, which is a wide body commercial jet to be built by a Russian company, which would upgrade an existing jet, the Illusion IL-96, to be Russia's new entry in the wide body commercial jet market. This new version of an aircraft designed over three decades ago will be the Illusion IL-96-400M. Before going forward, we'll take a look at the history of the development of the IL-96, which had its start just as around the time of the collapse of the Soviet Union. Designed by the Illusion Aircraft Design Bureau, the aircraft is produced by the Vorozhne Aircraft Production Association, or VASO, based on the Russian translation of its name. The early forms of the IL-96 was basically a shorter version of the IL-86, which is also a quad jet aircraft, originally built and designed in the mid to late 1970s. As for the IL-96, the first maiden flight and testing was, was done starting in 1988. It wasn't until five years later when the first passenger flights was conducted in 1993 after the fall of the Soviet Union with Russian airline Aeroflot, an airline that would go on to operate 10 of the aircraft. Since the start of production, there have been 30 of the aircraft operated and the primary operators have been both Aeroflot and the Russian government, which has used the aircraft to carry Russian government officials, including the president of the country. Over the years, there have been both passenger and cargo variants, though there hasn't been much international success as the only non-Russian based carrier to operate the aircraft is Cuban based Cubana which still maintains a fleet of four of the aircraft, the 300 variants, which interestingly are still used by the airline to this day. This leads into the upgraded version of the aircraft, which has been designated as the Dash 400M. Like its earlier versions and the predecessor, the IL-86, the IL-96 400M will also be a quad jet, though it will be based on the Dash 400T freighter variant. With a planned capacity of over 400 passengers, it would have a length of around 33.9 meters and a wingspan of around 60 meters. Its four PS90A1 engines will be supplied by Russian firm UEC Avyagdivetel, which will give it a reported range of around 8,750 kilometers. This range is relatively shorter compared to the offerings of Boeing and Airbus such as the 7779 and the Airbus A350-1000, which have ranges of over 13,000 kilometers. As a newer version of an older aircraft, the technology will be updated for the existing and future requirements of aviation and will require a two-man crew to operate the aircraft. This is all part of a renewed effort of Russia's government to develop more locally based aircraft. And within the last few years, it has put in over 3.6 billion rubles into the program. However, there have been some delays as the original schedule of the project was to see the aircraft enter commercial service by this year, 2021. So with other what could be seen as better alternatives such as from Boeing and Airbus, one would ask why would Russia undertake this development and as mentioned before, it is a part of Russia's plans to further develop its own aircraft. Also, some observers have pointed out to the issues regarding the collaboration with China on the long-haul aircraft C-929. This particular joint Chinese and Russian partnership has been experiencing delays in development, with some of these issues stem from disputes over who would be supplying the key parts for the aircraft. Digging deeper, it would seem that the discord between both Moscow and Beijing stems from how much knowledge and technology they would want to share with each other. With the delays that have been taking long for the C-929, this seems to be a fallback option for the Russian government to pursue its own wide-body aircraft development. As for the future prospects of this aircraft, there have been no confirmed orders from any commercial airline. The only interest of this new jet has come from the Russian military, which plans to base a new airborne command center on a Dash 400M quad jet. Meanwhile, making it a viable option as a commercial jet is probably a difficult task as previous local operators such as Rossiya and Aeroflot have, have since retired the IL-96s from operation, relying more on Airbus and Boeing jets for their operations. That's not to say that they don't buy any Russian-made jets as they do both operate Sukhoi Superjet 100s. 
However, it doesn't seem likely that they would place orders for this new jet, especially with the likes of Aeroflot, which is in the process of receiving its ordered Airbus A350s. The only operator that stands out as a potential airline to order the jets would be Cubana, which is the sole operator of the three IL-96s still in operation as passenger jets. And unlike their peers around the world operating mostly Boeing and Airbus jets, Cubana actually operates Illusion, Turpolev, and Antonov-made aircraft. Though there are many aircraft manufacturers around the world, few very specialize on wide-body aircraft capable of carrying passengers of between continents. That said, there also seems to be a trend heading toward more fuel-efficient twin jets for long-haul operations such as the 707 and the A350s, which kind of puts doubt on the overall project of the IL-96400M. Being what could be the last quadjet aircraft development for commercial airline use, unless some major changes happen in the aviation industry, there doesn't seem much going on for this venture. It's one thing being capable of building large wide-body aircraft, much less any type of aircraft. And in the past and now, Russia has proven it is capable of doing so. Case in point, the large Antonov aircraft used for cargo operations still today. However, there doesn't seem much case for the IL-96400M in the modern wide-body aircraft for long-haul use today. I definitely hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. This has been Flights in Asia, highlighting the news and updates on the aviation and travel scene in the Asia Pacific. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.